So I want to graph this sinusoidal function, which has this part right here, which I've done already, but it also has a k there at the end, a times f of b times x minus h plus k. The k is outside the function, so I know it's going to affect my vertical um, values. Let's start with the part, though, that's in this, in this circle right here. Let's start with the key part of the graph. So first thing I need to do is determine my amplitude. Well, the amplitude is the absolute value of negative 6, which equals 6. That's my amplitude. That's how high up and down it's going to go from the uh, center line. My period, here's my omega, 2 pi divided by omega. 2 pi divided by pi over 3. Let's turn it into a multiplication problem by multiplying by the reciprocal, so that goes away. If I multiply it by 3 over pi, my pi's are going to cancel out, and my period is going to equal 6. Oh, so I have an amplitude and a period of 6. So if I was just to draw my basic parent sine function, I know that the period is 2 pi. I know that half of 2 pi is pi. I know that between that is 3 pi over 2. And I know that, that on this side, it's going to be pi over 2. And this right here is 0. Those are my five key points. And I would have um, 1 and negative 1 as my um, uh, my range. So the sine function starts at 0, and at pi over 2, it gets to 1, and at pi, it's back to 0, and at 3 pi over 2, it's down to negative 1, and then it gets back up to 2 pi. So my sine function looks like this. I kind of try and make bowls. I'm not that great at it, but I'm getting better. There's my, there's my, my, my regular sine function. I've got my five key points, but I know that my period is six. My period is not two pi. Well, it's easy enough to do. Instead of two pi, I'm going to make it six. And in the middle, between zero and six, is three. And between zero and three is three halves. It's one and a half. And between three and six, it's four and a half or nine halves. So I've just changed all my key points. Probably better if you erase them. But, or, or you could have just started with 6, 3, 0, 3 halves, 9 halves, and not put in your other ones at all. And my amplitude, instead of being 1 to negative 1, is 6 to negative 6. There's my graph. That is a nice, straightforward way to make a graph of the form A sine omega x. Now, my particular graph right here has a negative sign. That means, and since the negative sign is in front of the whole thing, which is where I like it, easier than if it's part of the function inside with the omega, um, I just need to flip my graph over the y-axis. So let's kind of neaten it up a little bit here. I got rid of all my cross outs just to make it a little bit neater. And if I'm going to flip it over the x axis, at 0, it doesn't flip, it stays at 0. But at 6, that's going to come down here to negative 6. At 3, where it's 0, it's going to stay 0. And at 9 halves, where it was negative 6, that's going to flip up to be positive 6. And at 6, it's going to remain 0. So my function is now starting to look like this. Now, according to my function here, I still have to raise this by 4. So plus 4 is my k. So I have to raise my function by 4. <clears throat> now, what that means is this. I have my x-axis right now. My x-axis is my center line. And if I'm going to raise it by 4, all my values are going to go up by 4. 
So I know that instead of at six, <clears throat> it's going to have to be up here at 10. And instead of the negative six, I'm going to raise that. That's going to be like right here at negative two. So I could just take my graph and go like this. That looks uh, just about right. I could just raise it there. And now my starting point right here is at 4 and negative, and negative 2. <coughs> Doesn't look quite right. Yes, it does. And I have a new center line at 4. So the k changes my center line. And now you can kind of see, if you look at just the blue in that center line I just made, it looks like the exact same graph. So my range now goes from um, negative 2, inclusive, to 10. It's still a difference there if I go from negative 2 to 10. If I go 10 minus negative 2, that's a, that, that equals 12. So it means if I divide that by 2, I'm still going up 6 and down 6. That's my amplitude. That hasn't changed at all. My new center line is 4. And that's one way I can raise my graph up like that. Another approach, though, that I could take is instead of raising my graph, I could lower my center line. Well, I know if I... If I if I lower my x, y axis, that's going to be, it's going to look something like this. It's going to lower the x, y axis, and I'd end up with the exact same kind of a graph. I'd end up with starting it here at 4, going up as high as 10. Um, so this is my center line here now at 4. My center line has changed. Um, my minimum now has gone from negative 6. I've raised it by 4 to negative 2. I still have the So I, I lowered my x, y axis, <clears throat> which has the same effect as raising my graph. But since you don't have a magic whiteboard on your paper, one way that you can do this is just look at the graph here and say, OK, well, my maximum isn't going to be 6 anymore. You have to be able to figure out that your maximum is going to be 10. Your minimum isn't going to be negative 6. Your minimum is going to be negative 2. So you still have the same amplitude. And you're going to change your center line from y equals 0 y equals 4, that's your center line. And you should also then draw in your new x-axis. So that's, that's a, a, a little bit easier way, I think, to kind of make these kind of transformations um, using uh, k. And really, you've, you've, you've used everything now. You've had a sine function, and this has, um, it has an a. A B, oh, it doesn't have an H. We haven't done phase shift yet, but it does have a K.